Hey everyone, it's Norm Ferrar, aka The Beard Guy here, and welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the Amazon FBA and e-commerce podcast. Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm. All right, I got new digs. So I'm uh, just looking out at a beautiful lake in North Carolina. Kelsey's in North Carolina at a hidden location. Anyways, uh, we'll meet up sometime in the next couple days. Anyway, we got a great show for you today. Uh, something that I think every Amazon seller would like to talk about, and that's how to solve some of your complex seller central problems. I already see Simon's got a question in there for us. I think it's a question. I can't read it exactly, or it'll be one of his normal comments. But anyways, our guest today has experience in owning and overseeing millions in sales on Amazon using his own brands. And he also helps brands scale fast with a supportive team surrounding him. Uh, I want to introduce the founder and CEO of Seller Candy. His name is John Cavendish. It's his first time on the, uh, the podcast. But before we do anything, we'd like to have a quick word from our sponsor. I wanted to give a quick shout out and say thank you to Global Wired Advisors for sponsoring this episode of Lunch with Norm. Global Wired Advisors is a leading digital investment bank focused on optimizing the business sales process. For more information, please call Chris Schifferling and his team over at globalwiredadvisors.com. Okay, where's the squire? Hey, hey, hey. How's everyone doing? Welcome to the show. We're in uh, new locations. It's kind of fun. And uh, yeah, how's uh, the Beard Nation doing? Let us know in the comment sections. I can see we have Simon joining us, Manny, Rad, Jacob, and Steven. It's good to see you guys. Where are you all watching from? Let us know. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, Seller Central uh, issues that sellers have. So um, this is a great opportunity. If you have questions, uh, concerns, issues, let us know how uh, your year has been going. I know there's been a lot of curveballs for sellers, especially this year. So um, yeah, let us know in the comments section and we'll be doing a, a little Q&A se uh, session with everyone as well. And don't forget to smash those like buttons, give us those thumbs up. We'd uh, really appreciate it. As well as if you're looking to join our Beard Nation, you can go over to our free, 100% free Facebook group, Lunch with Norm, Amazon FBA, and e-commerce collective. And if you're looking for a little extra, what I like to call a little more beard, uh, you can join our membership program. <laughs> I know. <laughs> our, our membership program on our website, that's lunchwithnorm.com. And uh, just click the membership button. You have opportunity to join uh, some small set or small group session uh, Q and A's with me and Norm, as well as guest lessons um, from Stephen Black, Amy Weiss. We just, uh, I've, I'll announce it here, but we have Ritu Java um, for this month or for January. So that's gonna be a great lesson. Um, and also welcome Alberto, Marina, Jessica Rabbit, Nier. We've got a Facebook user and uh, William C. Riley. Very nice to meet or see you guys. And it's going to be and, a good and show. And I never get enough of Simon as well. There we go. <laughs> oh, and hello, Dur. Welcome. We're doing fantastic. How are you? And uh, okay. Yeah, we can jump right in. Okay, fantastic. So if you do have any comments, like Kelsey was saying, especially on this topic, if you've had a problem with Seller Central, don't know how to use it, just came up with something, an issue, just throw it into the comment section and we will get to it. Okay, so other than that, sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee, enjoy the episode, and welcome. <laughs> hey, John, how's it going? Great, thanks. I think I have the, the little beard you were talking about. There, there we go. Yeah, it's, <laughs> so it's kind of the in-between the Kelsey beard, which he tried and could not grow yours and then mine. So there we go. Uh, John, since you're the first, uh, this is a first time episode for you. Can you tell everybody just a little bit about what you do? Sure. Um, so what I do or what, what seller candy does, our business does I is we, bit of both. Yeah, we bring, um, peace of mind to e-commerce entrepreneurs. So what we do is we help them with all the stuff that drives you crazy about running an Amazon business. So basically anything in the back end of Amazon Seller Central, 
our you know our team supports with that. So we try to give our clients the seller central experience that they wish they had. So it's interesting because uh, we had a chance to take a look at your app. Um, although we're going to be talking about seller central specific problems yeah. in today's podcast, you do have a very unique app, and this is sort of the second episode in a row that uh, we've talked about unique apps. Um, I thought this was very unique because it really does work with seller central problems. You have, you have a subscription based, uh, monthly based platform that if, if something comes up, you take care of it. And it's not just seller central problems, but it, it kind of just eliminates those types of headaches, which I thought was, I don't think there's anybody, I haven't seen any other mm. app out there that does that, which is kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, we basically, instead of hiring a virtual assistant or something else, you know, our clients work with us and we're just a, a better solution because we have absolute experts and everyone's outcome driven. And, you know, we just, that's what we try and do, take away the uh, the craziness of working with Amazon. Yeah, and we'll talk a, a bit more about Seller Candy in a, at the yeah, end sure. of the yeah. episode, but where would you like to start? I know everybody has problems with Seller Central. So I don't know about you, but if there was a starting point, you're the expert, where would you like to start from? With Seller Central. What's all right? So but we could, we example, could talk about the most common problems. How's that? <laughs> yeah. So for example, with you, what, what, what problems do you have? What do you see with your businesses and your agency? Like what issues do you see regularly? Oh, Nears on the line. <laughs> <laughs> We've been working on a problem forever. It just seems that it could be a very simple problem. So something comes up and nobody reads the bloody email. So you send, you resend, you resend, and you're typing in just, would somebody please read, you know, just, and you get so frustrated because you're not getting the results. And we get that a lot from, you know, just people asking us questions and it should be so simple, but nobody reads the email. Yeah. So how do you get around that? Yeah. So the reason that that happens is because in the back end of Amazon, in seller support in the Philippines, mostly, or in Costa Rica, uh, when they get a message, Amazon's trying to standardize everything as much as possible. So they're trying to keep it so that the people are cogs in the system rather than problem solvers, because if they're problem solvers, then they're not replaceable and repl replicatable. So they have to follow what their system through, which is called workflow. So they're basically following a wiki on the back end, the same as you're following a wiki on the front end. So if they, whatever they get to at the end, they have to copy and paste that into the responses. So that's how you end up with these stupid templates every time, because they're not allowed yeah. to go above and beyond to figure out what the real problem is. All right. You got a hack for us? Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> the hack is not to talk to seller support too much. Um, so whatever it is, there's different processes. So say it's something like something simple, like updating a listing. Something that should be super simple. We want to update the listing. We want to change the content, but it's locked. Amazon is not reflecting the changes. What lots of people do would be to raise a case and then just chase that case over and over again. And then a week and a half later, maybe it gets updated. Um, but the best way to do it is to basically start by downloading the category listing report. So you raise a good hack is always, if you want to do a listing update, um, go to Amazon, uh, raise a case to, for them to enable your category listing report which is basically the flat file on the back end of your listings. Right. So once you've got that, ed, you know, go through it, delete everything you don't want. So all the ones you don't want to update, find the one you want to update, and then update the um, everything in that. So update all the title or the bullets or whatever you want to update. Re-upload that through the feed file system. And then you know, it may work. But now you can call, because now you've got a batch upload number for that feed file. So they can't tell you to go away anymore. They can't tell you that they don't know what you're talking about. You know, you've got a traceable number. So you call them up, you say, put me through to the captive team, you get put through to the captive team, and then you just push them until they do the update. So that kind of takes it from a, a frustrating many, many weeks to you getting it done the same day. That's a great point. And one thing I, I do want to point out, the catalog listing report, you did go through it, but it is something you have to request. It's not something that's just on the reports menu. You have to go in and, and actually request it. And it usually stays open for what, seven days? Yeah, seven days. Yeah. So that's a great one. Now, the other thing, like I sell soap. And mm. a lot of the times what will happen is I get these stupid suppression suspensions that I got to work through. The one, the big one last year, I think, a year and a half ago, was pesticides. 
It's nothing to do with pesticides, but I had to go. It's antibacterial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I meant, you know what? I mentioned it in the the listing, right? So I learned my lesson. And so I, I had that. I had claims because I had the word psoriasis in it, or I had uh, um, something about brown. So you have to be very careful what you mm. put in your, your listing. So that got nailed. Uh, what was the other one? Oh, I had hemp oil. Believe it or not, I had hemp oil and I got suspended for that. I mean, I've had more suspensions on my listings over the last year to two years, and they've all been stupid suspensions that should never have happened. Now, mm. I get them back, but it, it, it comes at a price. It cost me sales. Yeah, so your Oh, so that's, this is actually a personal question, but is is your business based in Canada or the U.S.? Um, it's uh, I registered it in Canada, mm -hmm. and I I most of my sales are out of the U.S. Yeah, so that that throws a spanner in the works a bit because if you're a U.S. based company, what we'd say is do the um, pesticide test because that way yeah. you can eliminate most of your flag. Um, but in your case, you know what you have to do is pretty much the similar process to what we. What I went through before, which is to get the category listing report, sanitize it by removing anything, well, ideally removing almost everything, apart yeah. from this is a bar of soap, um, re-uploading it, calling up again, getting Amazon to refresh. And once you've got it back, then you can start adding back content. Um, it's fine when you've got a few listings doing it. We can be really, you can do it really quick, but we had a Canadian client who had 5,000 listings flagged. And oh. then it's just a war of attrition against Amazon doing them as quickly as possible and working through the whole catalog. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 and it has been extremely tough and that's exactly what we're doing is just mm -hmm. redoing it from scratch. That's actually what Vandana is doing right now. I hope she is anyways. <laughs> but uh, so what about any other common problems that you're seeing this year that, that, uh, that 2021 has just been a killer for? So we have quite a few resellers that we work with as well, as well as mm -hmm. private label sellers. And there's a lot of IP claims, suspected IP claims. So this year, Amazon introduced a new bot. And every time they introduce a new bot, everything gets flagged, as right. always. Um, and this bot highlighted second, like third party listings that mentioned copyrighted brand names. So if someone had created extra listing for Nike shoes, and they'd use the word Nike or something like that, it would then flag the listing, and they'd get 50 to 100 uh, health, account health warnings appear on their account immediately. Um, so obviously that makes everyone panic. So that was a that was a big thing this year of a lot of resellers getting huge amounts of um, account warnings and account health warnings. Right. I see that Nir said something about being risky. Uh, what are we talking about, Nir? Can you be more specific on that? Maybe you said something further on. I'm just seeing the last comment that you made. Kelsey so I'll, I'll... Uh, when he answers, I'll throw the comment back up. All right. Very good. Okay. So uh, just one sec here. I am in a different location. And <laughs> actually, I was telling you guys just before the podcast that I've had to jerry-rig something. I, I'm My computer is literally on a, bon a bunch of boxes. So every time I touch anything, you know, I, I'm just thinking everything's going to topple over. So I, this is called a bush fix. With With your team... Uh, I know with our team, we have this risk evaluation process and we go through some of the more um, minor processes on if this happens, then do this because it's bound mm -hmm. to happen. One of the things that happened um, this year was the claims. Uh, we had issues because we talked about psoriasis and eczema. Um, mm -hmm. We talked, oh, uh, I forget one of the, some of the other things, but because I even mentioned it, all of a sudden things were being suspended. So. As we were fixing the one, we were creating a process, which goes back to our last podcast, but a process on how we fixed it. So just letting people know that anybody who's listening, one of the first things that you you, you were talking about um, was going in, downloading your catalog listing and redoing it and then uploading it and then talking to the captive team because you have that case number. So that would be something that we would put into a note into our SOP or into our, we have a notebook um, in teamwork. And so if something like that were to happen, people could go into our policies or our risk evaluation center, check on it and then go forward. Is that something that you do as well? Oh, for sure. So uh, as we as we do things, we produce SOPs and they will get filed. 
Um, and then we also have experts in different in different things. So we have an appeals expert on our team who is amazing at appeals. We have a, um, a feed expert who tests if something doesn't work. So like Nia's question about making sure the flat file is right, you know, we we have somebody to check who's awesome at uh, who's awesome at feed files and basically did it at Amazon before they came to us. Right, and I, I guess one of the most important. Well, I, I don't think this would would have anything to do with it. I actually, uh, I was just talking about updating the listing. You want to make sure that you have a a partial update, wouldn't it be? Yeah, yeah, partial update. That would be the main thing. So you just don't override everything. I think exactly. that would be correct. Anyways, uh, what about plans of action? Um, can you give us any tips or action points on putting together a plan of action when when they're need needed, when they're not? Um, so plan of action is pretty much just needed when Amazon asks for one um, or when you need to get a listing back that's been suspended. I mean, the main, our main ethos with plans of action is don't argue with Amazon. Okay. You know, too many people that come to us when they've had a few issues, it's because the reason they've got stuck in a rabbit hole is they've argued with Amazon about it wasn't their fault or they didn't do anything wrong. And with, um, with Amazon, I think it's always best to just accept we did it, no matter what it was, even if we didn't do anything, it won't happen again. This is what we've done instead. And this is the reason why it won't happen again. So Amazon just wants to see we've identified the problem. This was the issue. This is what we've done to solve it. Um, one of the best ones, which I've which I heard of a few months ago, one from one of our clients, I think, is Amazon found some other inventory that wasn't theirs and then added it to their inventory. So they found some lost in the warehouse. They added it because they'd sold this product in the past. And then Amazon, then it sold, obviously, because it was FBA. And then it tagged as you, sold as new. So it was inventory they'd never bought, but then got added to their account, got sold, then it got they got flagged. So we had to do a plan of action to say that, sorry, we didn't send in any inventory, but we won't do it again. <laughs> and we, we will solve this problem by not reselling inventory that we didn't buy in the first place. Anyway, it was just like a, a stupid Amazon error. But uh, that's the sort of thing you just have to go, all right, you know, we didn't do anything, but this is, we just need to move on with our business. The whole goal is to keep selling, keep our account in good standing and keep trading. What are the three different degrees of Amazon slapping on the wrist? I guess that's what I would call it. Mm. Uh, like I'm thinking of the least amount is a warning, right? So you get a warning, an email. What, how do we, how does it evolve from the warning? That's a good question. I don't think I've ever thought of it as classifications quite like that. So, I mean, after a warning, then you start getting account performance notifications and your account may, may, may move into at risk. Mm -hmm. And then that's when we're very aggressive in following up with Amazon and figuring out why it's at risk, what the issue is and how we can stop it. Um, it's very rare to have an account suspended unless you're doing something that Amazon's really not happy about. Right. Yeah. I guess the ban is the worst. Yeah. The ban is definitely the worst. Def definitely the worst. <laughs> and when you're talking about the ban you know, going into that, I mean, you've got to do something significantly upsetting to Amazon, right? Yes. Most of the time, unless you're just very unlucky and, you know, unlucky as in you were selling a product, like for example, if you were selling masks during the yep. COVID time and yep. then Amazon suddenly changed their regulations, even if you were selling them before the COVID, that's, that caused some real issues for some people. Yeah. If you, if you want to hear a real mm -hmm. horror story about that, uh, Kevin King came on and he lost uh, about a million dollars selling PPE, uh, during COVID and he did everything mm -hmm. right. He even had an Amazon, um, uh, one of the people at Amazon higher up working with them and the algorithm kept shutting it down. He lost a million bucks. Oh, so horrible. yeah, it, it, it is horrible, but guess what? He's still selling on Amazon. So he still believes in Amazon, even though that happened. Uh, but I, I guess with the account ban, I mean, there are people that get bans for, they have two accounts and the two accounts yeah. are still selling the same product. We warn people all the time about that but they don't realize that that is a real taboo. You cannot sell the same product in two accounts or own the same two. Mm. Um, they will shut you down. There's so many things. Let's talk about that. What will Amazon shut you down for? <laughs> uh, yeah, so as, as you were saying, same products in two accounts. That really sucks. Yeah. Um, 
related accounts recently has been a big thing. Lots of people getting flagged wrongly for having related accounts and getting shut down in certain marketplaces. So Amazon won't necessarily shut down your entire account, but they'll ban you in Canada or the US or one of the European markets. Um, recently, I've, I've seen quite a few people getting banned for drop shipping, not the full account, but initially they get their FBM privileges suspended, which is the first time I've seen this. Hmm. In the last month, I've talked to two separate people who've had their FBM privileges suspended for drop shipping. So they can only sell FBA, That's, uh, which is a new one to me. Yeah, yeah, new one to me as well. Um, apart from that, like the stupid, the silliest one is one of our clients went on holiday once and then didn't put their uh, account on away, and you got banned for just not responding to customer messages for a week and a half. Oh boy, banned. Well, they got suspended. Sorry, yeah. not banned, but their account was suspended, and it was a hell of a job getting it back. Okay. Well, before we go into the next question, uh, I just wanted to let everybody know that we do have a Wheel of Kelsey today. The Wheel of Kelsey is an audit, audit by uh, John and his company. And we're also putting in a month worth of the Centurion League and one of our calendars. So if you've seen Tim and Tim Jordan and myself, we have a calendar. Uh, we have an image that comes out every Friday or Thursday, I think it is. And um, we've decided to put out a calendar this year. Well, there's a bunch of them that have just arrived and I'm happy to send one out. So it's a complete bundle. You'll get the audit, you'll get the uh, the calendar, which is worth thousands of dollars. <laughs> and you'll get a, uh, a Centurion League membership for uh, a month. So all you need to do is hashtag Wheel of Kelsey, tag two people, and you will get a second entry. So again, I'd like to go back and just talk about, I don't think we hit enough of the common mistakes that people make, um, that you see people make in their accounts. You want to talk about that for a bit? Sure, yeah. So that's actually part of the audit. So what we do in an audit is we look for the mistakes people make in their account. So things like, so many people have the wrong FBA settings, like things like um, having uh, inventory placement service turned on, having not having export settings turned on right, all these little things, which just like profit drains and drip money out the bottom of your business. Uh, other things we see regularly, just listing issues, like when you don't have, if you don't have um, monitoring software set up on your listings, then sometimes things change, Amazon messes with things and you just don't notice because you've got a lot of listings. Um, there's a lot of breaks between storefronts and listings we see often. So on, on the listings, you know, where the brand name is, it's not linked to a storefront or it's linked to the wrong storefront or a guy yesterday, this morning I talked to, cause it's now like 18 hours later, he, his storefront was li linking to lubricant for some reason. Anyway, so <laughs> that was a funny one, but okay. a, a really not a good one for your brand. Um, there's mistakes in like storefronts, not being set up right, not being linked right, not having, um, PPC set up right sometimes and having campaigns that have just been running in the background for a long time and not turned off. So that's, that's the biggest, you know, that's probably a list of some of the biggest stuff we see in accounts regularly. Right. We go through them. Is some of the things that, uh, we've, we've noticed as well, uh, let's just kind of go through the, the listing mm -hmm. and these are minor, but you can have a su su uh, suppression. Um, if you have the logo or if you have a border, or if you, have, you don't have the white background on your, uh, on your uh, photos, I mean, that's, everybody knows that. And every, a lot of people, you know, I'll, I'll hear it when, oh, my account is su suppressed. Why is it suppressed? And then you take a look at the, the, uh, the image and it was just due to an image that was a problem. Once you put mm. in the proper image, everything's cool and you're up and running. The other problem that we're seeing is a lot of the time it, this was big uh we saw accounts that were suspended uh what three four months ago because they had capital letters in their bullets did you see hmm. that i i didn't see that um there was tons wow there's a look there's a lot i mean almost all the listings i see have right capitals capitalized bullets yeah so we were telling people as soon as we, we like all of a sudden it happened like overnight we we got four or five messages and then we heard of more people it wasn't a suppression, it was a suspension. So it was due to the, the, the caps. And if you take a look on Amazon right now, maybe it was an algorithm adjustment. Yeah. Tons of people still have those caps out there, but we've changed everything uh, right now to non-caps. 
And the other thing that came through was the HTML. There was an HTML issue that uh, you could really just have a page break or bold uh, mm -hmm. in the description, which at least if you did that, it looks better than just keeping your product description all just plain text plate format and that looks ugly. Um, and then adding a brand name. We talked about that uh, for a second, but having using a brand name other than your own mm. um, in your listing is, is, is a taboo. Uh, claims have definitely been an issue this year. Uh, and it, it, it's, I, I think those are probably the main ones. Outside of that, if I take a look at going down the listing, even in even in your uh, images, but also in your bullets, satisfaction guarantee, hundred percent guaranteed, um, free. The word free, mm. like let's say it's free of um, whatever, free of Parabon free or whatever. You know, it's instead of that you put non Parabon or, or yeah something like that. Anyways, we had to change all our listings because we had the word free in it. And this goes back two or three years ago, but it's still a lot of people are using the word free, 100% guaranteed satisfaction. We have a full list if you go to Lunch with Norm, and it's a full list of probably 100, 200 uh, words that is on a restricted list that you're not supposed to be using or those rules. And the other thing you can do um, is to go check your guidelines and see exactly, like they give you a breakdown of what you can do, what you can't do. It's not everything that they're asking, but it'll give you a much better idea of what you can and can't do. And if you stick within those guidelines, then you're good. And a quick rule of thumb is if it doesn't feel quite right, if it doesn't pass the gut check, then why are you doing it? <laughs> so, you know, it, it was the whole rebate thing, right? Like going mm. to these free rebate groups or very cheap rebate groups. We've been warning about that for a long time. And guess what? It, you know, it hit the fan just a couple of months ago. So I don't know if you have anything more to add to that, John. Um, the only thing I'd add when you were sharing about um, flagging for claims, like compliance. This year, Amazon's been super, you know, it's a lot more hard on compliance. So like child yes. safety certificates supplement certificates, just, you know, make sure you've got everything certified that needs it and make sure you can back it up when Amazon asks for your certs because Amazon's asking more and more often for compliance certs for everything. Yeah, and they've put in a compliance tool. I don't know if you've seen that. Um, it, it's still in beta and it's still not that great. But mm -hmm. if you do have a, uh, if you know the country of origin and you're bringing it in, it'll tell you you know, the uh, certificates or the certification you should be asking for. And that's, an awesome tip. That, that's a big one that we we saw that Afro lobby and I were doing some work and this person just wanted to bring in some product and they had to get the order in right away uh, or they wouldn't meet the deadline and they didn't ask for any certification. Well, it came here and it didn't have any. And so they had to go back and it was going to be a ton of money that mm -hmm. uh, the the supplier didn't have it, and for them to go out and get it done, it was going to cost a lot. Anyways, um, it turned out that they didn't do anything with the product. They couldn't sell it. Oh, they, sucks. it yeah, they, but this is where it takes an extra question when you're looking at a supplier and asking them if the proper certification is there that you need, or making sure that the certificate you you check if the certification if there's any certification requirements, like toys, for example, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah, there's a few extra steps you got to do with toys, but anyways, and that's different on every brand. I, you know, you can go through like with what I do with my soap, um, you know, you have to check in Canada, it might be a different certification that's needed to sell than going over to Europe or to Japan. Um, mm. but anyway, that's one that I know that Amazon's trying to work with. It's, and I believe everybody has access to it now. It's just a compliance tool. I, if you're brand registered. Okay, so let me see. First, I think I want to just cut over to a word from our sponsor and we'll come right back. All right, just give me a quick second. And then first, and I just want Kelsey me. to push the right button. You really like to just, just throw that push, at me. Push that but button, right now, Kelsey. Right now. Just like when you smack. Thank you, Sellerize, for sponsoring this episode of Lunch with Norm. 
Cellarize is your comprehensive solution for your everyday business needs. Everything you need to grow and scale your Amazon business is just one click away. For more information, contact Dima and his team over at Cellarize.com. And remember, Cellarize is with one R. Okay, there we go. I like the one R. That's great. Yeah, one R. Um, all right, Kels, do, do we have questions coming in? I'm thinking that there'd be a lot for this topic. We do. Um, yeah, we can start diving into them. Uh, so let me see from Nathan. Uh, when seller support says for months that they uh, are working on the issue with their team, is it best to wait on them for months or start a new case and start over? I think right. somebody froze. Uh, yeah, so John, I think you're uh, froze a little bit. Uh, we'll just give you a second or two. John, if you can hear oh, us, okay. just click your uh, camera button, stop the video, then bring it back on. And other than that, that uh, yeah. Okay, I'm going in the fetal position. See you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. So, John, um, it looks like maybe your Wi-Fi is just um, cutting in and out. But, Norm, if, do you have any... Uh... Oh, here he comes, I think. Uh -huh. So it'll... I'm Sorry, guys. I'm trying to read again. It's a uh, stranger. Internet. Yeah. All right. So let's yeah. take a look at that question, Kels. Can you read it out to me? So uh, when seller support says for months that they are working on the issue with their team, is it best to wait on them for months or start a new case and start over? Oh, 100%. I would, for me, and I know Nier is on here. I'd like to hear what he would say, but I would start a new case. If they're not getting anywhere, um, I, I, I'm, I get fed up with it, you know, if, if it's going nowhere, but I, I'd also want to make sure that I have everything down, like every little piece of information to help back up what I'm writing in the case. And now near, if you're here, uh, cause we are having problems with John, maybe you can act. Oh, can you hear me now? Oh yeah, I can hear you now. Sorry. Yeah. I just, I don't know what's going on there. Um, yeah, so I, I'd agree with you, um, depending on the case. So, like, you know, you've got to be pushing, pushing, pushing Amazon on all these cases and calling up and escalating the case. And then let's well, open another case, see what happens. They may merge them together. They'll mm -hmm. probably merge them together. And if they do, then, you know, we know that's not an issue, not the, not the solution unless they, it helps. But if it's been taking months and it's a big thing, then, um, yeah, we just escalate. We escalate either to Jeff or to Twitter, you know, Twitter escalation at the moment is one of the, the best ways to escalate outside of Jeff. Okay. So going onto Twitter, reaching some support, getting them to send you a specific sign up form, so a submission form, and then you can raise it that way. Yeah, it's interesting. I wasn't sure if at Jeff was still working, but it is. People are still is. responding uh, from Twice the, the last Jeff. month. Yeah. We got two clients that success for that month and it worked fine. Yeah. Okay, so let me see. What did uh, Nir have to say there, Kels? He says something about Brad. I can't really read it. Yeah, um, so Nir is saying, uh, meanwhile, allow me to help. Uh, don't use brand names. Uh, this can cause problems in holding the money. Okay, and did Simon come back with something sarcastic or what was no, that? No, no, just another question. Oh, okay, but, uh, all yeah. right. All right, so uh, next question from Simon. Uh, does my vendor account still trump seller account and get more solid results? That's a question for Simon, isn't it? How's your how how is your venture account doing, Simon? I you yes. know I don't know if this is just a personal thing, but when we have some people signing up for a consulting service, uh, we just we, like if they have a vendor account, it's not even something that we'll consider working with. Um, I don't like vendor personally. I, I think you get much more control with uh just a, a single like a seller central account simon you know what maybe during one of our uh talks in uh, the membership site we can talk a bit more about that I, i'd like to learn a lot more about how you're doing it or working with them because i've dealt with a lot of brands and after they go on to seller central uh they just have so much exposure and so much freedom maybe you have both so it'd be interesting to, uh, our next talk let's talk about that and then we'll come back and we'll report. 
Okay, Kels, next question. All right. Uh, from Abu, when I upload my flat file, Amazon returns error to change the title to what's already on Amazon. So we basically cannot change the title even with uh, the full updated uh, flat file. Do you have any pointers? On, you know, on something like that, um, we've seen it. And they are just like a lot of the times that'll happen uh, for a brand name, for example. And they'll just force putting the brand name in front if you're not using the brand name. Um, I haven't any. The only thing I've been able to do is just redo the flat file, try to bring it up. And then you can report it to the, the team and see if there's a problem. I don't know anything outside of that other than opening up a case. Um, again, if John is here, not sure if he can hear us. Oh, can you uh, hear me? Oh, yeah. I'm, now I'm I can here. hear you. Can you see me? Can you, can you not see me? Can't, can't see you. but Oh, sorry about that. You. I can see myself perfectly. What about like that? Oh, there we go. Now you know? we sorry. I can see myself the entire time. Ah, sorry okay. about that. Go for it, John. Um, yeah, so... What I would say is we kind of do what, what I said earlier, which is once you've uploaded the flat file and you've got the batch upload number, then you can call Amazon and quote that and say, I've got a flat file. It doesn't says it should be working. Don't know why it's not working. Can you tell me why it's not working? Um, and then they should refresh the listing and hopefully the update will go through. Um, you could also have this issue if it was originally created in vendor and then you, they're the worst because vendor had control of the listing initially and then you're yeah. trying to get it back. But it's yeah. still, you can still push it through. It's just a real pain. Okay. So, again, a lot of people here uh, are, there's probably a third, a third, a third, beginner, intermediate, advanced. Uh, when, you're tr when you're talking about the captive team, how do you get a hold of the captive team? Oh, that's a good question. So, the, the captive team, to get hold of them, you just request a call back. So, it's better to go into your account, go to your brand page, request a call back. They call you. Um, and then from there, just ask to be put through to the captive team. Okay. And Very then just good. keep keep asking. And if you don't get the right person, hang up and start again, basically. All right. Good. All right. Next. Okay. Uh, so I think Simon was just clarifying his question okay. about the uh, this vendor account still trump seller account and get more solid results. Uh, he says he means for changes of titles, etc. Oh, that's tough. Like you just said, uh, in, in vendor, they control that, right? Mm. So uh, vendor has the most control. And if you're selling in both vendor and seller, vendor is going to have control. If there's right. no one selling in vendor anymore, then you can get control back. It's just a pain. Yeah. Lots you can submitting. suggest it, Simon. So you can make, I, I think you mentioned that, John. You can make a suggestion to make the change. Whether they do it or not is a whole different story. Mm. Okay. And then we have... This question from Simon as well. I have a major selling seller account problem. Tried to open US account to merge with my UK account. Didn't get verified. Tried again and again. Months later, still no account. Support not very supportive. Is there anything he can do? There's a few different escalation email addresses that you could use. Um, I've got a list of them somewhere. There's a list of them somewhere online as well. So there's, you could try the management, managing director UK escalation address because they should hope, hopefully help you open in the US. You could use the UK seller verification email address. You could use the US seller verification email address um, and just reach out from your master account email and say, basically, I'm having this issue. It's not working. What have I done wrong? Um, and Usually it's usually when it doesn't get verified, it's because there's a problem with the documentation. So whether the address doesn't match, there's something wrong, they there's just something that isn't quite right. So just double check all the documentation. I'm sure you have already, but looking for anything that could be a mismatch between what's in Amazon and what's on the documentation. Yeah, it could be the slightest thing. And like APT okay. instead of apartment or something stupid like that. And uh, just a reminder, uh, don't forget to smash those like buttons. Give us those thumbs up. We'd really appreciate it. And if you do have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comment sections. Um, we'll be here just for a few more minutes. We're going to jump into the Wheel of Kelsey real soon. So that's also uh, our giveaway. We're doing a free account audit with John. 
uh, and we're giving away a month of the Sincere in League, which is Tim and Norm's uh, private mentorship program from Private Label Legion. So a free month of that and a Private Label Legion calendar as well. So you're going to get all of that in today's giveaway. So that's hashtag Wheel of Kelsey. Just put that into the comment section, and that's that. So okay. um, jumping into our last couple questions. Yep. Uh, if you have a brand and only seller, how do you lose the buy box? Um, I, I guess I can chime in. Um, if you if you have your brand and you're the only seller, you could lose your buy box for many reasons. Um, sometimes when you raise a case to Amazon, they'll say your metrics aren't good enough, uh, which means that you know it might be a new selling that product or it's a new product and they don't have enough seller history. And then for some reason, you're not getting the buy box. Um, it could be that you've changed price recently and you've set the price too low and then tried to increase it too quickly and you get a um, pricing error, like pricing suspension. Um, could be your return rate goes too high and again, you lose metrics and Amazon just takes the buy box away. In general, it's usually an error and usually you can get them to refresh the listing if you lose the buy box and you're the only seller and you're the brand owner. It's just very annoying because Amazon will send you back a template saying, you must not have met our metrics for getting the buy box. That's their standard kind of template. And it's like, well, yeah. And then you get into the argument with them about it. Yeah. They, I've also seen, but they deny usually. But if you're selling on Walmart and you're doing something different or in Chewy and you're giving a better price, all of a sudden you'll miss that. Um, you'll, you'll miss the uh, buy box. Yeah. And they're not supposed to be doing that. But it just seems that once you match it, then uh, everything's cool. Uh, the other thing, Kevin King gave us a really great tip uh, when he was on the last podcast. He was talking about when you go in and you're launching a product, make sure that there's a min-max price. So that mm -hmm. min price could be a buck. The max price could be $13. And if you set it in between there, and you can go up and down at ease. So uh, anyways, if you're interested in that, it was the last time Kevin was on. It was last month. And he was talking about, you know, ways to get around that. That's an awesome tip. I like that. Yeah, yeah, it was a nugget. We got to come up with another word for nugget, John. I hate it. <laughs> and we well, can't why use don't, why ninja don't you like hacks either. Why don't you like huh? the word nugget? I don't why know. Do you like the word it, nugget? Everybody uses nugget. It's golden nuggets. Like a beard-themed word. Yeah, it could be. Like a yeah, hairball. They're, they're a hairful, yeah. Please, please no, that's don't just use gross. <laughs> that's <laughs> just gross. <laughs> okay, so you know, uh, Kels, I don't know if there's any other questions. If there are, there any more? I think we uh, covered them all. Okay, but, good. Uh, yeah, because I wanted to talk a little bit uh, about your app and why it's different. So, Seller Candy, you you sent me over a link. I took a look at it. And um, I just thought this was an option. I don't know if it's an option for everybody. Uh, I, I, I'm looking at Simon. That might be, and I know, I know Simon, so I, I know his products. It might be something mm -hmm. that would be cool for him to take a look at because it just eliminates these headaches. It comes at a price. You know, it's, it's not a free service. But do you want to just talk a little bit about it? Again, guys, I don't have an affiliate. I don't do it. Like, if I drive traffic over there, I get nothing. So, you know, I don't get a deal. I, John, you don't give me a deal on the, the app. So it's it's just something I saw that would be, I recommend to you guys. Oh, well, thanks, Norm. That's awesome. And um, thank you for your feedback. That's, that's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, yeah, so what, what we do at Seller Candy is we provide expert outcome-driven assistance. So we don't do PPC. We don't do strategy. We don't do consulting. What we do is we take all of the stuff you don't want to do in the back end of Amazon, all the shoveling, and then we do it for you, basically. We have a, a platform, which is like a management platform to communicate with our assistants. And all you have to do is log what it is, what's the outcome, and then you can basically think of it as done. It's like seller support, but we're never going to send you back a template or anything really annoying and frustrating. We're just going to get you to the results so that you can feel confident that you, know, you can get on with the other stuff in your Amazon business. So can you give us a bit of, talk a bit about price point? What mm. are we looking at? Sure. So our price point runs from uh, five, well, 497 up to 997 a month, depending on what package you're on, or if you're an agency, you know, we scale indefinitely. Um, 
basically at 497 is one market, uh, 697 is two markets, and 997 is uh, three markets. One market being US, and then one region being 697, and then Europe and the US being 997. And you get a different number of tasks simultaneously. So oh, I didn't explain that. We work on the unlimited task system. So what that means is you pay us the subset fee per month. Um, if you've got, say, a 697 plan, you get three simultaneous tasks. So you can sub uh, submit as many tasks to our portal as you want. As we as you, we finish one, we close it, we open another one, close that one, open another one. So that's a way of us balancing your workload so it doesn't cost you a fortune and it doesn't change every month. And you being able to submit as many things as you want and we have a prioritization system. So if something's like, I got a suspension, this is costing me money, I just click high, you just click high priority and uh, our team gets on it immediately. All right, very good. Okay, so how do people get a hold of you or your company? Sure, I mean, you can uh, check out our websites, sellercandy.com, spelled like in my name. And uh, my email, if you want to drop me an email, it's just john at sellercandy.com. Okay, fantastic. Wish me a Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays. There we go. Yeah. So you've never seen Wheel of Kelsey, I don't think. No, I haven't. All right. So Kelsey, bring out the wheel. I'm, you have any Tony Robbins I'm giving events? Giving you time, Kelsey. Okay. I'm giving you time. I just want to make sure you have time to hit the button. Okay. Oh yeah, we got lots of time. So John, <laughs> please enjoy this. This is a work of art. Okay, my uh, my older brother. Ready? Okay. It's time for the Wheel of Kelsey. Now, I realize it's a bit aggressive, <laughs> but that's part of the thing. So, yeah, here is the Wheel of Kelsey. Thank you, everyone, who entered today's giveaway. Um, if you are the winner, if this is your first time, you can email me, k at lunchwithnorm.com. You have 40 hours to uh, reach out to me. Um, unfortunately, I don't always have the ability to find you. So um, definitely uh, let me know before that runs out. So I'll shuffle these up. And here we go. All right, so let's see. The winner of today is Toyota from YouTube. All right, fantastic. Congratulations. Uh, all of the applause. Thank you, John. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so if you are the winner, uh, Toyota, thank you for uh, entering. Please email me, k at lunchwithnorm.com. And uh, yeah, we'll get you all sorted with your uh, little giveaway bag. Yeah, just please remember, because it's YouTube, we can't reach out to you. You have to reach out to us. So K at Lunch with Norm. And yeah, it's a great bundle. I'm sure you're going to like that, that audit with uh, John. And then, you know, feel free to join the Centurion League for that month anytime and we'll get you out our calendar. Okay, so that's it for now, John. We will be talking to you later. We'll have to get you back on to talk to about more updates next year but until then we'll see you later cool thanks for having me norm you're very welcome Christmas. yeah and you too okay everybody so i hope you liked uh the topic today we're going to try to dig in more to that we're going to be talking a lot more about this every time something comes up uh with seller central and we see these updates that you know maybe to the algorithm we will be posting them in the uh, in the group so if you haven't joined the group do that. It's just the uh, Lunch with Norm, the Amazon FBA Collective. And uh, yeah, we've got a really great active group in there right now. It's fully, like totally engaged. I think Kelsey was saying the engagement's like 75% or more. Anyways, Kelsey, where are you? All right. Yeah. I uh, hope everyone enjoyed today's episode. Uh, if you are interested in joining the Facebook group, it's Lunch with Norm, Amazon, FBA, and e-commerce collective. And again, like we said, if you want a little more of that luscious beard, you can go over to uh, our website, lunchwithnorm.com. And that's, uh, you can just find membership and click on that tab and it'll take you to our tiers that you can find uh, what's suitable for you. If you're looking just to buy a monthly cup of coffee for us, there's that. Or if you want something a little more extra you can check out our, our platinum tier where you can uh, get two to th or three q a sessions with me and norm a month uh, guest lesson monthly sops discounts deals all that fun stuff and a great community i really love our uh, 
our group that we have there. Uh, we feel like a little family. So definitely check it out. And uh, yeah, also, if you guys have any questions or topic or guest suggestions, we're looking at guests for the new year. Uh, let me know at k at lunchwithnorn.com. And we want the very best for you. So uh, yeah, reach out. Uh, we're open. Uh, we want to see what you guys want uh, to listen to for our podcast in the new year. So yeah, let us know. And I think that's it for me. All right. And I'm just looking at Simon. Yes. Merry Christmas to all the Beardos and a happy new year. Um, okay. Join us every Monday, Wednesday oh. and Friday. You're day. afraid of something. What? Our sponsor. <laughs> And a quick oh, well, word from our sponsor. Easy.co for sponsoring this episode of Lunch with Norm. Are you looking to take your e-commerce business from local to global? You can with the help of Z and their brand new app. That's right. You can track live shipments with push notifications, get detailed lead times for each stage of your shipment, and store all compliance and VAT reclaim documents in the palm of your hand, all while listening to Lunch with Norm. Ready to expand your e-com empire and take your Amazon FBA business global? Use the link in the description to learn more about Z's new app that's now available on desktop and mobile. That's Z.co. Z-E-E dot C-O. It's your fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, yeah. Blame me for this one. I but, can. <laughs> All right, now can I finish when you so yeah. rudely interrupted? Sorry, Z. Sorry, Z, but thank, <laughs> luckily for Kelsey. Anyways, join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at noon Eastern Standard Time. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for being part of a community. Like I said, the engagement in that community is just awesome. I mean, it's, I've never seen anything like it. And just keep that engagement coming. We love it. Uh, we want to engage as much as possible. And, uh, you know, we really couldn't do this without you. Join us on Friday. We are going to be doing a broadcast on Friday. Um, so happy to, if you got time to join us. And on that note, we will see you later. Lunch with the, lunch with the, lunch with the.